Hey, all right. I think it was my default browser. Cool. Yay. Yay. All right, we are live, kids. We're live. All right, let's do this. Everybody love my boots. I got new fighting boots. They're actually winter boots, but <laughs> I forgot my fighting boots. They're very fancy. So I get to, I, I get to uh, practice with heavy, heavy feet. Right. Uh, ankle this, weights. this week, we're working with weights this week. Uh, right. Ankle weights. Ankle yeah. weights. All right, so um, here we go. They're all standing around like, okay, what are we doing? Um, it's show, yeah, it's my show, I guess. Uh, well, it's our show. It's everybody's show here. Um, but you're the one that has all the like- I'm gonna, warm up we are, I actually sent myself some new warm up exercises yesterday. And, uh, oh, so I, I still didn't, and we're gonna have to do it. Yeah, we're gonna do it in my time. So anything bolded is what we're gonna do. Oh, okay. We're just shrinking that so we browser can so we can see. see the video. All right. So we're going to go and uh, first we're going to do a little bit of warm up, except uh, we're going to save some of the other warm ups we do towards the end. Um, Hang on, move that way so we can do our warm ups not on top of the ladder. Right. So let's start with uh, for some of our warm ups. Let's, let's just, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're just going to go and do our, our get in stance and we're going to do our long lunges forward. Again, try to roll that onto your toes where your toes are actually holding your weight, not the ball of your foot. For the people just starting this, try to get it onto the ball of your foot. For the people that uh, have been around a while, you should be able to start supporting yourself on those toes. And then back. So let's get some of those in. Now, when you go back, you can literally sit on that heel. Okay, you can, if, if you're even better, try to sit evenly across that. But if you tilt, even push farther back, some you're going to end up on your heel, and that's fine. And then back forward again. All right, let's get, let's get some of those in. Remember, both positions, no duck butt. That's right. Remember where your hips are. Right? Tuck so, it. That's right. So when you, when you get forward, we don't want to see, we really don't want to see this while you're going forward. Here I am. I'm going forward. This is, this is not it. My back is not straight. We want to tuck and that back goes straight. Get a little more in front of the camera. There we are. It's, it's this way. I'm trying to get as far as the ladder. Okay, perfect. So here we are. Forward. You can see my back is nice and straight. My hips are underneath me. If my hips weren't underneath me, I'd be doing this. And then back. You again, here, these hips actually have to change because if, if I weren't to change, if I'm here and I don't change this, then I'm, I'm kind of leaning forward here and that's not right either. So those hips have to move as you are traveling this line. That will also create a nice smooth line so it's harder for your opponent to see. Actually, you might as well try to keep your eyes at the same height yep. from the front to back. So your, your eyes are sliding in a straight line. And uh, a good way to do that is making sure you have a spot on a wall that you're watching. And then, okay, let's switch those feet. Again, here we are. And then I push a little farther forward. There we are. When you get good at this, you should be able to get that foot up. In this case, I had to roll back down. There we go. I rolled back down to my follow my foot, but you should be able to feel all of that. Here we go. You can see head stays nice and level and back and forth. And in my slow quest to get all the YouTube videos up, we have a video from earlier in the pandemic where we really dig into and break down this movement. So I'll put that at the top of my priority list and get that one up next. Abelard, you make sure you watch that knee. It looks like you got a brace on it. Dramaticus, that looks very good. Nice, Bess. You're just smooth right through those nowadays. 
see our new folks are doing. Craig, you're looking always good. You're always pushing yourself. It's awesome to see. So you put yourself on fire the other day with your post. That was good. Vim, that's, uh, you're doing good. I love your new space there. Nice ladder. Thank you. Todd, I'm glad you cleaned out your garage too. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it a lot better than practicing in the snow. Well, from Alyssiana, I'm glad to see you guys back. Nice to have everybody back. All right. Let's, uh, so for the next one, let's just go ahead and do our nice, nice rotationals out. We are going to get back to squats, but we're going to push our squats today uh, a little bit. Hey, sorry, we were muted. Nice to be back. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, have to that goal. Yeah, if you've got real flexible hips like me, and you need something to get a little more into them for, for opening them up, get down in the bottom of your squat, and you can start with just sort of tilting a little bit. And if you've got some flexibility, go ahead and tap those knees all the way down. Try and scoot your feet in just a little bit instead of being way out here, sumo squat style. Normal squat, come down, going through that range of motion of the hips. And if you can only do a little bit, if you can't get to the bottom of the squat, get up here. <sighs> Open those hips and eventually get your squats lower. And also, plant our feet out in a wide stance and just do hip circles. Helps get into those inner thighs, get to the outsides of the hips. All those little bits. And just do some, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, and do some rotations that way. I'm trying to get the boxing up. Yeah. As you, uh, as you go through these, try and get them lower so you can get more of a hamstring stretch. Down at the bottom here. Slow and smooth, but you should keep moving. You don't want to hold big, long, static stretches right now. Trying to open stuff up, get it ready to move. You don't want to actually like pull apart those muscle fibers yet. What else do you want us to do? On you to get that back. I am. We're doing timed intervals on squats today. He's going to pull up. I'm going to try. An Let's app. Go. But basically, the way this is going to work, a lot of you have probably done this in, in various types of workouts before, is we're going to tell you what exercise it is. And you're going to go, how many seconds on? We're doing 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off, then 20 seconds on. And the idea is to do them. Do them as fast as you can. Yeah. So you're do doing a good. hit workout. You can. As you can. Don't do it Your as fast as we can. Your speed and our speed are we're all going to be different. As long as you are working and and it is difficult for you, then you are putting in the same amount of effort as someone going twice as fast. So I'm going to show you each exercise right now, just so you know what's coming, and then we'll call them out. So the first one is going to be the flat foot squat. So we'll we'll just get into our squats. And then the next one is going to be the jump squats. And then the jump squats, we're going to get down here and we're going to jump. Okay. If you can't jump, you're in the house, then here and push up. Back down, push up. Remember these, try to keep your back straight. So keep your toes, you know, roll here and then push up. Yeah. And try and make that up push as up. explosive as you can. You're just not going off push the up. ground. The push next, up. next one after that is going to be lunges. So lunge. So just your basic lunge. And again, you don't have to go super deep. And then the next one is lunge jumps. Uh, no, we're, that's not marked. We're oh, never mind. We're not doing that. That was so here. The next one is going to be in and out. Ins and out. So these are essentially out, touch floor, in, out, touch floor. This is a wide squat jump, basically. And if, again, if jumping is no good for you, step it out to the side. 
Exactly. And then just go to the other side. There's always an option to not jump if you can't do that. Next one is ice skaters. You can get on either side of your, your ladder and essentially you're just shifting back and forth. Okay. I guess it is. And the last one is the jump squat power 180s. Did I actually include those? You did. No, I think I included those by accident. We'll, we'll hold off on those. All right, excellent. The next one is high knees. In other words, yeah, I think you just highlighted the wrong one. Okay. All right. So we will call them out so you'll know what's coming. But now you've seen them all. Is everybody ready? You ready for this? Okay, and form over speed. Yeah, form over speed. If you start losing it, slow it down. Yeah, go as fast as you personally are capable of doing with good form. So if you get three reps in 20 seconds, so be it. It's not a big deal. And there are 10 <laughs> seconds between the rounds. So we'll have a chance to relax and breathe in and then we'll do it again. Are we repeating rounds or are we just going from exercise to exercise? 10 seconds between the exercises, I'm sorry. 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. This whole thing will be done in like three minutes. So flat foot squats to start. Ready, ready. Four, three, two, one, go. Oh, this thing is not very loud. Yeah, I can't hear it at all. That's okay. We'll call it out. We'll call it out. Five, four, three, two, one, rest. That I hear. Next one is jump squats. And ready, ready go. go. Round two. Five second warning. Yes. Next one's gonna be your basic lunges. Three. Two, one, go. Round three. Keep that back, nice and straight. Oh. And oh, rest. Do in and outs. So that's sort of our pop scotch, touch the floor. Or just hop. Ready, go, go. Round four. Five seconds. Rest. Ice skaters. That's your hop side to side. Ready, go. Round five. Make sure you focus on staying upright. Yeah, no leaning. Travel that perfect line. As you get better, try to get farther. Rest. Last one, high knees. Remember, just do this as best you can. This is the hardest one. Ready, go. Round six, so final. Hurt. Three, two, one. Hey. Everybody like those? Yeah, I really like those. Only takes three minutes, but you're warm now, I bet. All right, everybody get a little bit of a drink and we're gonna start on some footwork drill. We'll go back to the ladder. Woo. So we said we're gonna do a smaller subset of ladder drills each week now. Yes. So this week, what we are gonna focus on is the, the turning 
moves. Since we're going to lead directly from that into our actual circle around the pedal drills. So we're going to do the, the angled skiers, our, our 45s. We're going to do our turning steps. That's normally our last one. And I think he wanted to add in the regular jab jumps and switch foot down the ladder as well. And that's it. Oh, one more. And we're going to do the, the, pendulum step. the quickness stuff too, right? Just, just some of it, not all yep. the quick So we got like five ladder drills. We're going to run through them a little quicker than normal. I'm not going to break them down so much. If you are newer and you need the, the breakdown, contact us on the side, log on to Coach's Corner YouTube and find the instructional videos. Right now we're trying to transition to make these a lot more warm up and leave more time for other stuff since we have a little bit more of a time limitation in our space right now. All right. So how's that? Uh, everybody good with uh, continuing those warm ups a little bit like that? Yeah, I think they're super. How's everyone else feel? Because we all know best is crazy. <laughs> I'd like these written down somewhere because I'd like to be able to do these in practice. Yeah, this is yeah, the good part yeah, is we're ahead, for, for ahead of a tournament. Yeah. yeah. It's really nice if you're yeah. at the cold place. Ooh, yeah, they, sorry, they're working in your space as well. Okay. Yeah, they work really well in our space. Yeah, which isn't very big inside. More, so. more so than the ladder yeah. does because we don't really have room for that. Okay. I just say high knees, but that's you know probably means I need to work on them. Yep, that's I mean and that's a big trick. We talked about that early off, but we'll just remind everyone. This specifically, I do not know what your body is. Your everyone has different sets. Everybody has different you know weaknesses and strengths. So you perform to the level of your body, and try to push yourself every week. You're here because you are pushing yourself. So the idea is. Hey, last week, those were easy. I'm going to go a little bit farther down this week, especially if you have bad knees, yeah. right? And we'll keep showing the different sort of types of modification you can do if you can't handle jumping for whatever reason. There's lots of reasons yep. that people can't do that. Be it your knees, be it, you know, you've had surgery issues, be it you don't have, you have a really low ceiling. There's lots of things, so. Yeah, the good part about a lot of these drills is about flow and that flow into movement like we did the figure eights last week. You get a lot out of that burst. Depends on, you know, that's another layer of an attack. We have a lot of bursts when we shoot forward on somebody, right? When we do that jab step and things like that. So building those for burst is important. It doesn't have to be fast. It just has to, you know, sometimes you're just going to set them up, give them a little twitch, see their tension comp, and then step in real quick. And your step in is probably doesn't have to be super fast. Wrong baller is not a super fast fight, but he's super smooth and he pulls people into positions. So remember, this is this is about just getting in better shape, getting your body stronger, and then that will translate to what you're going to do on the field. All right. All right. We're going to dive into our couple of ladder drills for the day. We're going to start with our angled skiers. So. Um, at my 45, starting with that outside leg, we turn our foot to the angle and come across. So remember, this is all today is all about pointing feet. So you notice my foot points in the direction my body wants to be. This can be at the same time. You can also do this in the same box. So if you don't have a lot of room, then do it in the same box. Let's try it. Yep, there we go. That's part of the outside, outside in. Outside there we go, good. Outside in, outside in. There we go, good. Yes. There we go, good. Keep your head flat. Louis doing and do your change up the pattern. Go ahead and do that. 
we got a bunch of people here, so we're mostly going to stick with just running through it normally. And everybody maybe do their one variation. Some you can practice on this because that's great. That's great. Yeah, don't want to lean over. Tuck those hips. Good. As you get better at this, one thing you might try is adding the hip. And what I mean by adding the hip is you can literally start pushing with this hip and then let that body naturally pull with it. Okay? A lot harder because sometimes too much hip rotation in this place actually pulls you out of position. All right, go ahead and try it again. If you want to try backwards, that's fine. Or forward again, that's perfect. Good. Oh, nice. Okay, You're starting to almost pick both feet up at the same time now. That's good. Yeah. All right, let's see how Vim and, and Angus are doing. Good, Vim. That looks good. Remember to get down into those knees a little bit. We're going to work on trying to get some strength. Yes. Much easier to see you, too. That's nice. Thank you. Angus, that's looking good. He's at the very end. Oh, third to the end. Top. All right. And then, yeah, backwards is. Remember, it's the same thing. Just put this outside. So to put outside comes behind you. Right? Good. Nice, Jasmine. Doing it better than mine. I started. <laughs> Just back. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, you're, you're starting to time them better. Yeah. So, you know, before you were stepping and then changing, yeah. and they're getting closer and closer. You're almost skipping now, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. That's very good. All right. All right. So, up next, we're going to do one that we actually haven't done in a while, but it's one that we do around the pels. So, we're going to do it here real quick. It's almost exactly the same. We're just going to switch the order of the feet. So, this is basically your basic triangle step from any of your long swords. We're going to move this foot first this time. So, in this case, we're not cross doing a cross step anymore. We are doing a gathering step into the end. It's basically our, our most simplest drop step, and we're just adding that turn. Yeah. So the key on this one is remember when we talk a triangle step, this is exactly what this is. So this is a nice step to do when you're close to somebody. Because when you do a crossover, there is opportunity if they're close, they can push you. So if I'm, if I'm standing here in front of, go ahead. I'll get Louie over here. So if I'm standing in front of Louie here after we're going to get him started. Yes, I'll, inside, but goes outside. Instead of a set gather, it's a, yep. a gather step, a set gather. Here we are, outside. Okay. Yep, that's it. I know. Step out of the ladder. Yep. Then, yep. There you go. All right. So in this step, if if I'm back here, this crossing step is really easy to do because Louis far enough away he can't just punch me. If I'm here and I start doing this step and Louis bumps me, then I lose control because my feet are in line. No, no, this is actually it's not bad. This is hurting more right now. So instead, I lead with the strong foot, create a solid base, and then onto his side. But just like that, that shuffle step, the difference in the length, how far I can go. If I'm here and I'm away, he can't punch me. I can use that shuffle 
behind or they're crossing behind to make a huge movement. I can't do that with just a gather step. You can see that there's like less than half the same distance. So this is the difference again between a gather, but in this case, even if Louis hits me a little, it doesn't matter. I'm strong, my base is wide. So I don't have to worry about it. This is where this step is more important. All right. So it looks like, yeah, looks like everybody's had at least one round. Uh, well, I was going to keep it rolling okay. and let people do extra on their own, especially because turning step is going to take a little bit. Yes. So wow. turning step we're going to do next. I'm only going to talk through the two most basic ones, which is regular stance. Perfect. Step with the back foot and regular stance, step with the front foot. If you know these and you want to run through more variations, please do. If you want to do it backwards, please do. For the sake of time and expediency, I'm only going to show these two basic ones. So the first one, I'm in my stance, I face the ladder, back foot moves first, point down the ladder. That's our, our thing of the day is where we're pointing our feet. I pop back into my stance the other side. Back foot points down the ladder. Flip around. Just remember, you're always leading with one foot or the other. In this case, we're leading with that back foot. If you can't turn it all the way, because there is some force on the knee being occurred here, turn it three quarters of the way. Make sure you're on the ball of your foot so that when this one comes back, you're just turning on the ball of your foot. It makes it a lot easier. This is where it's dangerous to your knee. I make a straight step. My foot is flat on the ground. And then I try to turn. I am literally just this much starts hurting my knee. Yeah. And my knee is an okay knee. So this is why you need to be on the toes and just roll right through this, back, starting with the back foot. And if you, you can't get your toes, you'll notice that pointing down the ladder is much easier. And if you can't do a full 180, then try less single at a time. That'll be easier on your knees. Yeah, you could just do 45 if you want. And if you want to add a little more advanced, try and stay on the balls of your feet the entire time and control your balance. Right, separate. Keep your back up and look forward. Don't right. look down. I'll go right in front of you so you can follow me. Ready? Here we go. Back foot. Step down the ladder. And then back. And then back foot. Step down the ladder. Right. <laughs> We're going to always face down, down the ladder. Hey, back foot. Back foot. Point it down the ladder. Yeah. Back foot. Point down the ladder. Yeah. Yeah. When you step, your toes will be facing that end of the ladder every time. You're going to point at the wrong every time. For folks at home, you can do this forward and backward almost in the same place. Sorry, yeah, let that go. Back to she was going awful slow there. Okay, there we go. Good. Back foot, down the ladder. Okay. You were fine. You were fine about the step. So the key is why you're going down the ladder. Just remember to put a little bit of force into a 45. So look, this That's good, Vim. You got it backwards too. Good job. This one is uh, known for breaking brains, so you're doing really excellent. <laughs> right in the middle of the next one. Perfect. Pointing down that way. You're good. Back foot and then kind of halfway to the next one again. Yep. There you go. You see how you moved on the 45 there? See how you're falling into those ladder better? Good. You think? All right, for anyone that needs it, I'm going to talk through the front foot version real quick. So same stance, my same, my, my normal stance, my regular foot is forward and back. So I'm just going to step with the front foot and it's the same thing. Point it down the ladder, flip around back into stance. Front foot down the ladder, back into stance. So Master Casimir mentioned something that his problem is he doesn't get back into a good stance after this and then it makes the next one harder. So make sure that when you make those movements, this is actually a hard one for me with the front foot. When you make that movement, make sure that that next step is a big step. 
Here it is. And I'm back into stance. Okay? Because then I have to step forward again, back into stance. And if you need to pause until your table. If you have to, remember, grab that little. If you've got a stick, grab your stick. Okay? And hold it in your hand like you got a sword and shield. That way you can make sure that your back is straight. And again, folks at home that have been doing this for a while, go ahead and swap your stance, do the other foot, add in all your backwards runs, whatever it is you want to do. If you're newer, you don't have to add all those extra ones yet. <laughs> Focus on getting this one, this version, just right. Good. That's perfect. Now you're turning that foot back. And if you're watching this on Facebook or later on YouTube and you're like, ah, I don't know any of these, we've posted them on the Coach's Corner YouTube under the drills and instructional playlist. You can go find a little bit more of a, a breakdown that you can pause and replay as many times as you need. Remember your front foot. Because that makes things like this a lot easier because it just feels right when you're like, oh, yeah, this is where I'm ending. It becomes automatic. So that's that's what we're trying to build in. All right, let's see how folks are doing here. Todd, how's this one feel? These are actually a little harder. So we're going to give you a little more time. Let's see how. So you're skipping in there. Yeah, is that better? Make that swing back foot far. Yeah, there you, there you go. go. Yeah, you only have so much room to work with. So remember to, in this exercise, that keep, this is a really a big control exercise because if I don't control my hips, what happens a lot of times, I'll put this here, now I drive way back here and I, my body keeps falling and that leg wants to follow it. So this is a big, Hip control exercise. Make it nice and soft. Nice and soft. And staying upright and staying stacked will help keep you from falling off to the sides either way. And this becomes a big control point in a fight. If you do something so big that you're not controlling your body, you give your opponent an opportunity. Don't bring that foot all the way back, remember. You brought it back again. <laughs> That's a hard. I have the same problem. Yes, then we can do the circle throw. <laughs> yes, we got the switch foot, the jab drills, the long jab drills. Yep. Yeah, let's do the long jab ones too. All right, so these can also be done backwards. And I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna pop you on Nessa because I wanna see what you're doing over there. So I'm calling you out. Uh-oh, go ahead, let's see what's going on. Then I'm gonna make Wolverine do them so I can see. Oh, <laughs> <And she's, laughs> hey, what are you doing switching foot? Do it again. I know you're paying more attention to her than their feet. Uh-huh. There you go. Good. Good. That's better. Good. All the way down the ladder. Wolverine next. Let's get up there. Good. Make sure you got good stance. That's the way. Very nice. You're keeping your back really nice and straight. Nicely, nicely done. All right. So I'm not going to call you out. Let's see how, uh, I know. Sorry, Nessa. I just called you out for messing it up, not paying attention. 
Nice, Vim. That's the way. That looks good. Your nice soft carpet looks nice too. <laughs> Makes it easy. Abelard, we're going to replace because I haven't seen you in a while. Let's see those feet work. Remember, you're getting a double step in there, so be a little careful. That should be one sliding single step, right? So which foot you're leading with, the front foot or the back foot? All right, so lead with that front foot. Put it in the box. I think, okay, that was the back foot lead. Let's try it again, lead with the front foot, stop. See it now, you see how you bring that foot back with you? You, you gotta leave that front foot as the front foot when you go into the next step. <clears throat> There, exactly, it can slide back a little bit. That's right, there we go, good. Yeah. So for everybody, you should be practicing switch foot on this as well, okay? So you should be switching your feet. Hold on, I gotta get it back on you. Oh, sorry. So same thing, now I'm gonna go from my normal stance to my funny foot stance, and I'm gonna lead from the back. So now we're going to do it with the other foot. Okay. We're going to do that and then we're going to start same thing. Now we can do it with the other foot on the front foot. This is the idea. So as we have people go through and you go through your ladder, you should be thinking about, okay, got to switch my feet. Remember, there's like eight variations of this. And then the next one is backwards. Regular stance, long one. Now we point backwards down the ladder. Okay. And then we can do, you know, do our front foot backwards down the ladder. And then we switch feet and do them again. So there's eight variations of that. So as, as others may be slowing down, making sure they got stuff right, and you are advancing, do all of the ones you can. All right, for now, time's gonna start with the next one. Yep, the next two, we're gonna kind of rapid fire through them. So y'all can just jump in when I'm like part way down. We're gonna do our, our jab jumps in and out of the ladder. These are pretty straightforward. You jump in the box, out of the box, full box. Good way to start this. Make sure you're not turning your foot in like side is right now. Back foot. Your and your front foot, you were I'm just calling you up. So you were twisting a little bit. Yeah. So yeah, sad about it. Yeah. I know. So so again, the idea is make sure when you step into this box, my foot is still actually still trying to keep that that pizza end. We don't want where this foot leads and turns. Then swap your feet and go the other way down the ladder with the other foot leading. Good. Yeah. Don't try to get too much air. Don't worry about how long it'll start. Just a little bit if you have to. There you go. Much better. And switch sides. Yeah, then switch sides. Better side. Yeah, I'm fine. So we're going to go ahead and do our switch foot. So now instead of body on, moving. Uh, okay. Oh, sorry. That's okay. There you go. Are you having trouble with the other foot? Or is it fine? It's hard to get to figure out what I'm doing. All right, okay. Stand right next to me. Okay. Use your stance. So they're going to work through that back there. We're going to go ahead and start our switch foot. So now my body is going to stay in a straight line moving straight sideways along the edge of the ladder instead of in and out and i'm just going to switch much underneath me
if out of habit I start with the foot in the direction I'm moving. Doesn't really matter. So stand one foot in, one foot out. Feeling better? And then switch it. Anything square? Yeah. Now jump sideways. Yep. There you go. So, we'll we'll have a small so for everyone else, let's burn into those. Try to keep perfect height. Nice, Van. Exactly. Try to get less bound. <laughs> yeah, get your back straight and switch both sides. Both sides of the ladder. Or just balls with the feet. So again, this could be done in one space. So here we are. I stand right here. If you have a little bit more, go sideways. Go sideways and back sideways. Try to keep your eyes forward so you can see the ladder a little bit with your peripheral. Try not to look down. Yep. Go left and right with this one. See how everybody's doing over here. Yeah, yeah, no, right Vim. Good, good. That's okay. You're sort of standing back behind the ladder and just sticking your foot forward to tap in. Okay. Move your body forward so that it's right over the edge of the ladder. And one leg is in front and one is behind ever so slightly. Yeah, your your body should be right over the line. Right over the line. Okay. Uh-huh. Yes. yes. There you go. See how we're even on both feet now? There you yeah. go. Woo. And try to stay on the balls of your feet if you can. There you go. Very good. Much better. All right. Let's go over. Let's see how Germanicus is doing real quick. Uh, we haven't seen Germanicus. There okay, he is. Here we go. Let's see how he's doing. He gets a small space, so he goes back and forth. Good. Nice and smooth, man. Your head's hardly moving. That's the way. You're doing a little bit of the tap forward, too. Yeah, make sure you're even. Try and center the weight between your two feet. There you go. That's a little better. Good. You remember, yeah, try to get 50-50 on both feet. There you go. All right. <laughs> Last one of the day. For ladder drills, we're going to do our jab jump that is bigger forward and smaller backwards. So, big forward, small backwards. You can both do it at the same time, or follow us if you're fast. This one. I'll do this one. That's what I do. Yeah. And then switch feet. Let's do it with the other foot. Doing these a while, you're comfortable with them? Go backwards. Yeah. Do it for wrong, Valder. He's here. He'll know. That's right. He's like Santa Claus. He's hiding off camera, but he's here. Remember, I can see you. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Oh, where would we be without uh, classic wrong, Valder dad jokes? <laughs> That's just wrong, Valder. Ah. Uh. Hey, you know how uh, Alanon said you guys were joined at the hip? I've decided now you're Braunvalder. 
I know I heard that one from Rongvalder last ne last night. So we agreed that you should have to do this class after we're done all over again. I didn't know I joined the dad joke club. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I hit the unmute button instead of the sound button on the TV. And my apologies. <laughs> no problem. Hopefully your feet are cooperating with you and your knees. I hope you still feel good. And I find this one way harder. <laughs> this is not my normal foot forward in my left. So this one's the like, hard I one. I don't understand. Going what backwards, doing. we want to lean. You want to duck butt these when you go backwards if you don't want to do that. This is really trusting that your your hips are yeah. your lift that back foot. So lift Take your back foot without tilting your shoulders. Right. Because you're kind of taking the whole body here. Just keep these here and you're just gonna you got it. Yeah. Good. So Viv, remember, keep that front foot a little turned out. Don't try to turn it in, because when you turn in, your hips go with you. Okay. Um, now that I don't mind that, if that's part of your style, I'm okay. You want to be in a line, or do you want to be line? But just just be aware, if if you're used to wherever your hips are normally, right? So if my hips are here normally. My feet should be here. My hips are normally maybe to their 45. That's fine. Just make sure when you you don't turn that foot when you go forward. A lot of people want to turn. And then their hips change. So the key is wherever you are, if I'm at a 45, then I want to keep that same foot placement. So um, the only reason here we talk about keeping the person in the V a lot. Uh, there was a great episode on Friday that talked about always going back to your neutral stance. Mm -hmm. Super important. So we just have the same thing comes here. Always want to fall back into that neutral stance. So if I do something, if I pop in on someone, it's like, bang. And then I, I, I stand here and I pop back and I turn sideways while I'm popping back. This is not my neutral stance because this is not my normal. I'm going to pop in, bang. And then I'm going to pop back and I'm just here. I'm just waiting. I'm in, right. This is my normal stance offensively and defensively. Okay. That concludes ladder drills for the day. All right. So. So as you see, we're kind of progressing through them pretty fast today. Uh, if we have to, we can slow those down. You guys just let us know, uh, pop it in uh, in the space on, on the, the, the messenger or, or later after, after we're done. Yeah. The next piece is gonna be rotational drills. And I, I did something on purpose. I left our, my little, uh, little circle discs at home. Uh, I'm gonna show two ways to do this. I'm gonna grab a chair but I'm also gonna grab the pole we have. So. so here. Yeah, it's a, it's a third part. All right, why are you over here? Just trying to keep us tripping on ladders. All right, so, so the idea here is if you, again, you can do this with a chair. Rhonda sits on the chair, pulls the string, and water pours all over him. Ah. Shades of flash dance, man. Yes, yes, pour water over What him. a feeling. I'll flip my, I'll flip my hair back on my hair. <laughs> All right, so. If, if you're at home and you have a limited space, especially if it's side to side like Angus and Vim and a few others, think about this as a half half a circle. So as you wrote, as we do our feet, we're going to go around halfway. Okay? That way you don't need as much room to do this. All right? So I'll show you the right footwork. I'm just showing you an example. For those that do have the room, the idea is we will travel totally around 100% one way, and then we'll travel around the other way. A chair, 
a bottle on the floor, it really doesn't matter to big pieces, trying to keep your exact distance as you're flowing through these drills away from the object. Now, for most of you who have practiced these before, if you have a pill, you go outside, you can grab a really handy tool uh, that can go outside or inside. And all this is, is a flange, oops, so all this is, is a piece of gas pipe, a, a gas flange on a three quarter inch piece of plywood. Okay, there we go. So that's all that is. You can actually make that so it screws out and screws in so it makes it easier to travel with, but that's all that is. This is just a piece of PVC pole, whatever length you want. This is all easily obtainable at your, your typical big box hardware store. So the, the key on this one is we're going to use this as our pelt or our rotational point. Because like we're not going to hit it with a stick. And then the trick is we're if you have it. something in your hand, a piece of foam, these small sticks, you can touch it if you want. Uh, the, the idea is we'll rotate through these exercises. And at first, the idea is we're going to just go through them normally. Right? We're going to start with a gathering point. I'll show you in a second. So we'll rotate that. As you, if you're already better at this, then you should have a sword and shield and keep that perfect neutral stance all the way around in movement. Because that neutral stance, perfect defense. This is what I don't want to see. Here I am. I'm making, oops. Hold on. Here I am. I make a move. And you see how my hands and get wider and back again. Now why? I'm going to hold this. My finger is on this. I make a stance, my finger is still on it. Flip it. Okay? It is not this. Literally, just keep your finger on it. It will show you that you're not moving. It's all about control of your body. Okay? Last one is, again, as you do this, if you want to add once you know your step is right, you want to add just the technique of your throw, you can do that. You don't even need to have a pole here to do this technique. But three different ways to do this. Start simple, make your, make your movement perfect, make your defense or neutral stance perfect, and then make your throw back to neutral stance perfect. All right, we're going to start with the movement first. Right. We did this last week. Simple gather step. Again, just like all our other rotations, my foot is turning. Okay? If I don't turn my back foot as it comes around, my hips do not turn. So in other words, if I take a step and my foot doesn't turn, my hips are over here now away from the pelt. And in fact, this is what we see a lot in the SDA. I'm here, I want to pass to this guy's side, I'm going almost straight forward, and I'm on the side almost all the time on it. That is absolutely the wrong way. We have to turn that back foot. So we just, this is a simple gather step. In other words, we step out, we gather the back foot back to the front. Same distance every time. It's like if you have a real or imaginary circle on the ground around your pal, you're gonna land on that circle the whole way around and always be facing the center. Yeah. Do you want to flip your Yeah. Promise we end up in stance with every step, right? Every step, you yes. always end up back in neutral, right? Back in our perfect form. That was for Rongvalder too. <laughs> ah. <laughs> For the hive mind that is Braunvalder. <laughs> no, try not to stand and jump up while you're doing that. It's almost like you're lifting this foot and falling sideways. There we go. Exactly. You're all right. Okay. So take a smaller outlet. Yeah. 
So right now you're reaching over there, that's probably because you clicked. So what I see is you're reaching over here. Think about this. If this works, fall into it. Excellent use of the small space, Jim. I feel like I'm moving in. Your back's not too bad. Um, I mean, you kind of are a little bit. What you may want to do with your limited space is take your, your rotational spot and move it over closer to a wall and just do a half circle and then half circle back the other way. Because okay. you, you are somewhat being forced by the lack of space to make that forward step. I'll try. Yeah, then my pal is almost against the wall. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah we okay. had a couple of people that have to do that because of their space. Vim, why don't you use, is that a freezer? The corner on your freezer where your tennis ball is on the floor, you yeah. could make like a four, like a hundred and, I don't know, 200 degree circle if you start. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. My bob at the corner of my desk. There you go. So yeah, that's looking better already. There's still a little bit of in and out with the range, but that just takes practice. What you can do is uh, get some some painter's tape or something and actually draw out a circle on your floor mm -hmm. and, and work on getting your feet to land either, you know, make your front foot land right on it every time on that circle. And then you know you're at the same range okay. or you can put it at the right range to do heel toe. So like so the heel right. of your front okay. foot and the toe of your back foot will be right on it. And so that way, literally with every single footstep, you have a, a gauge. See, even just thinking about it that way, it is it is smoothed out immensely. The heel toe. Hole. <laughs> oh. We froze up for a second. We'll come back eventually. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah. So, so, as you, so you got 20 foot here. Yeah. Okay. So, as this one goes, this one, this one will turn as well. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Because what's happening will probably, if, as you're doing this, you immediately get the other. So, it's me and turn. So, the idea is here. So, what? We almost we fall, right? This foot's almost off the ground at the same time. <laughs> Later on, what you're going to do is you're going to count how many steps it takes to get around all the way back to the initial position. See, Germanicus has a smart idea here. He's using one of his swords to, to mark the distance and make sure he's the right distance away. Very nice. So, whatever. Yeah. As you get stronger, sometimes it changes. So now we did, I apologize everyone, we did the gather step one way, right? So I'm in my normal stance, now we're going to do the gather step the other way. So when we went around, first time it was the back foot. This time it's just going to be front foot. And remember to turn that front foot as you're driving in. Um, a good point was brought up because it started feeling it in knee. So be careful if you do have knee issues, this is one of those scenarios, two things are happening on this step, okay? And that is, there's a turn of this front foot. If I hold my foot too hard to the ground in the back and hold it down at the same time, I get a knee inside my toe line. 
So think about as this foot, this is a drop step. As this drops here, your, your other foot should be releasing almost at the same time. Or take a smaller step. Make sure your heel is not on the ground. Because if your heel and then you move, that's what's going to cause a lot of that problem. The other thing is if you're trying to take a bigger, longer gather step, you're going to push from this. And because you're pushing sideways a little bit, it's going to put some force on that knee. So, so there's two ways you can hurt your knee in this one. As you turn, your knee goes inside your toe. So try to try to make sure that these are my feet are almost in the air at the same time. I drop that one and lift the other one. Okay. So that way your, your foot's not locked on the ground. Second one is as if I really push, then I'm pushing off the inside of my foot, which puts more stress on your knee. So if you're feeling it, either of those things could be the issue. So let's go all the way around. The key in this, once you figure out the size of your box or circle, even if it's an imaginary circle, try to figure out that distance. And then how many of these it takes to get around? So for me, it's about five and a half with this step. And it's different going left and going right. Yeah. So the, the goal is, as you get better at this and smoother, you'll find that sometimes you get more power on those bursts, and you may shorten that distance over time. And then as we go through the shuffle step and the crossover steps, you'll see that they're shortened significantly. So let's get, finish up those other foot, gather your step all the way around. For those who have already did it, get your hands up in a good position. Like you're fighting somebody, make sure you're in a good neutral stance with your sword and shield. Pull up Cyprid. I think those guys are doing sword and shield. Yep, we got a, we got a handful of folks doing sword and shield already. Awesome. A lot of our folks that have been nice, with us a long William. Time. That's it. So William here is doing doing throws. You can see both William and father they're doing throws right back to the neutral. Watch those cross feet there. So Sivert, I want some more. I want you to think about, you're thinking a lot up top and your feet, your feet are a little, little light or a little loose. They're getting really close together. Uh, they're getting sometimes linear. L look at where Williams are. You see how wide his are? I want you to, want you to concentrate. Let's see, let's see you on that one. Aha, you see what I'm talking about. Good. That's better. That's better. You wanted to concentrate on this. This is what we're concentrating on. Yeah. Now, get your stance back to where it's supposed to be. Your, your tip was over your head. All right. Make that hand point at your opponent. Okay, you're trying to process Okay. All right. So we're going to move on. Uh, again, if you feel like you're doing something wrong, stop us and we'll work on making sure we fix that. All right. So I keep pushing this too close. And oh, uh, yeah. Side I... looks at me. And then I'm, I'm it's afraid. like I, I shoved it far enough that they could see the whole circle of your feet. So the next piece <laughs> is we're doing a shuffle. So this shuffle, we're bringing the foot almost a almost in replacement of the other foot. I usually bring it a little bit closer because it's, think of that front foot staying on the circle that's around your pelt. The back foot is off the circle. So I'm taking this in front of this one and then this one goes out. So it's, and again, while I'm crossing this, I do not do this. I do not keep this toe straight. If it's in a straight line, I'm going sideways. My pelt's over there. In this case, as we turn, this foot actually turns and points towards the pelt. Right? Because as soon as I'm here, my hip automatically starts rotating into this position. As you get better and better at this, your hip and, and body, and I'll do a side way where I'm pointing, hands on the, on the up. So as this comes over, I'm always trying to keep that pull in between the hands and those hips. Okay, again. 
So as you get better at this, as you get better at this, the, the, you'll notice you can count your steps here and it'd actually be a shorter time number that go around the pill uh, because it's essentially that shuffle step is a bigger step. In Saib's case, she's, as you're shuffling, you're almost shuffling past your front foot, but it's also your front foot is coming off the ground. So I want to show you here, that front foot. So as I'm passing it, right about here, you'll see my other foot leave the ground. So I'm in the air. So it gives me more distance. Okay. That's it. Good. Nice job. Exactly. Yeah. All right. There we go. Where are you going? Okay. Right. This is the new one. That's right. My my uh, my hip turned out just a little bit. I could almost feel myself leaning forward a little. So I'm gonna check on how everybody's doing there. Abelard, not bad. I see you have to remember that front foot once in a while there. But that's that's relatively good. Like to see it. Taking a look at Sivrit, see how he's looking over there. Yeah, I was using it so they would look right between the two. So you're yeah. 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 Right. So William, remember in this case, you're going side to side. So you've got a very flat stance on your opponent. So remember, you're going to lose range when you're square like that. So try to do a heel toe. So you remember your range, yes, that one foot. Yeah, see, now that foot can cross over the back a little easier. Yes. And you have a stance that you can actually lean forward and throw when you're ready to throw. So you do that shot, and then you lean forward and you throw. So move, yes. So we, yep, there we go. You see how you change your distance with your, yes, that's exactly it. Good. That's what I wanted to see. Good. Nice, Siver. Your feet are much better here. Thank you very much. Going over to Anessa and Wolverine. So they better be working and not drinking margaritas. There we go. Very nice. Good. Awesome. All right. Good. That's the way. So remember, you try. You can try this with a sword and a fake shield. You don't need the shield, but if you want to try this with the sword, that's fine. Just try to first time around. Try to keep that sword perfectly still. Make sure those arms aren't coming wider apart or anything else. Oh, nice little buckler idea. Perfect. And that tip does your hand doesn't float up or anything. You want to keep it perfectly pointed at some point on your pill. Hey, I'm gonna go over to Craig see what's going on over there. Make sure he didn't. Uh, Nice. Very good. <laughs> like he shook his head. It's like, damn it, wrong foot. There we go. Good. Very nice. Very good, Craig. I like it. Looking nice. Go over to Todd. See how Todd's doing. All right. Exactly. Make sure you're turning that front toe out while you're traveling. There you go. Yeah, I can see you're still getting used to this one. There you go. That was the perfect step right there, Angus. You actually turn that front foot as you're as you're bringing it. So, so Angus has to do for, for the folks that have to do it back and forth. Let me go back to the right camera so you guys can see because I didn't show you the other way. It it's pretty much easy. So let me make sure. Whoop. Um, 
There we are. Go back. All right. So again, so this skip we just pointed with our front foot. In this case, with this other skip, that back foot is going to point the way you need it to point. So in this case, that back foot actually turns out because if I were to turn that back foot in, I'm going that way again. If I turn it out, here we are. And it just crosses right over that foot. Right? And then we can change it back the other way. And again, watch this come in. Especially in a pal, we want to do this and lean over it a little. Leaning over this is the bad part. Okay. All right. So our last one should come the hardest. Actually, I'm going to make I'm going to make Side go and hit that with uh, this one with her uh, with her sword. Because you have limited, go ahead, get back in front of the bell. Uh, for you, they have limited distance. So Louis is going to do halves around. So here's his normal half. You take two steps, it'll almost be all the way around. <laughs> right. Now, if you're going to go in the reverse yes. direction, 
the key point here is you're take a, a small freak. step with that front foot to get your body in motion. It's kind of like a drop step where you just pick up the foot and you already start moving. So if you take a small step, you can do the cross pretty quick and get your feet back on the ground so that you're stable again. The key on this is that you're creating the motion. So the difference between the shuffle and this is you actually can create more swing motion with the back foot crossing. So as this back, if, if I just shuffle, I don't have a lot of swing motion. If I, if I whip this, I get a lot more swing motion, pulls my body apart. So that's the difference in, in that cross step. So and if you get a little bit lower in your knees, you can get more range. And you can keep your hips straighter with your knees bent and, and a little lower in the hips. So if you end up raising up and your hips start turning because you're reaching and your hips are going to turn with the step. So bend your knees a little bit if you can and then try to keep your hips forward and then um, to keep your hips uh, turning away also stay on the ball of your feet a little bit so that your toes can pivot. So you're not forcing your knees. Yep. So that's, I'm going to go, Angus, I'm going to swap over to you because I know you're new. These are a little bit harder. All right. Let's see what you got. Yes, exactly. So go ahead and use that swinging back foot. So Angus, you had, you have the right idea. You just, you just did that, that first step. Let me go back here and, and show uh, on us. Uh, actually, I'm going to, I'm going to add us. There we go. So the, the, the key on this, uh, it doesn't work so well. All right, okay. Oh, I'm on the computer, that's why it's not working well. Sorry, thank you. There we go. Side's fixing me. All right, so what you did a little bit, you had the right idea, is you took a small step here, like Louie was talking, you're just leaning into this. So, so I don't have to drop, but I'm falling into this step. This foot doesn't just come in back of this foot. Use that foot as a leverage to throw you. Allow it to swing through. Okay? It's almost like bowling a little. So you have that big swinging foot. And that big swinging foot allows you to flow through deeper. If I just bring it to the back, I get a smaller step. <laughs> yes, it's very much the bowling foot. <laughs> I see Nessa's helping Wolverine over there. It's a curling foot for those in Canada. Yeah, it's a curling foot, yeah, for those in Canada. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, that's right. They do use that in their first first big role, yes. <laughs> Bess is doing, Bess is showing that curling. <laughs> All right, let's see how Abelard's doing, and then I'm going to roll back to Angus and see. As All a community, right. it's mandatory that I know curling. That is, that's right. Nice. You didn't forget this one, buddy. That's awesome. You're doing a great job there. Good. Nice, fast feet. All right, I'm going back to Vim and then back to Angus, because I know Vim's new at this too. Good. That, that's, the, you got the idea. Now you just have to point the feet and you'll rotate better. So even when, yep, exactly. You see how you're rotating right around your opponent now? Now you're still facing them. Your hips, your, your defense and offense are exactly the same still? Exactly. Good. So where, when you take that, um, when you take that cheater step with the back foot, um, know where you, your space is with your opponent because you're going to be closing a little bit of range there and you're giving them the impression that you're closing range. Um, so <laughs> you may end up stepping right into their shield and losing your balance. So be aware where you're going to decrease your range when you're starting that motion. People understand that that's pretty when we do that motion. So go ahead, talk about it. Hold on, I'm going to bring it back to Ron Waller here for a second. People may already get this. Uh, oh, uh, uh, hold on. Wrong baller is going to explain, but I got to pick the right one. There we go. All right, go ahead. So, with most of these, when we go around, we're trying to maintain a reasonable distance. That's part of this, by the way. If you got one little thing, unless you don't have the room, this isn't really helping. Talk louder. So, for 
starters, don't do your circle tight. Let's just don't have the space to do it. Right. You want to maintain actual range because this is the distance at which you'll fight. So most of the stuff we're doing as we practice the circle, you want to maintain this range. So every time I take a step, I'm staying the same distance from this pole the whole way, whether it's that or this. Okay. So now we have this cheater step here, cross and back. So what's actually happening is we're moving like a star. Okay. But so this kind of a thing, right? It's not a circle. So I'm going to go into my opponent. And he just moved. So if I'm here, right? You can see, go back for a second. See, I can't touch him, but he steps forward a little bit. Now the range changes just that much. And then he make, makes his next move. I go over. And, and then, then he falls back. back out again. I can't and touch I can't him anymore. Touch. I step in, step across, I step out. In, so, cross, out. So just be aware, because that's important to know. Okay. It's not only important to know, eventually it'll be a tool for you. Like Louis said, you have to be aware because if all you're trying to do is go around the guy and you do this, you stepped into range. And if you're not ready for that, you got you have a problem. But it's real nice when you know it's happening to step into somebody because this looks like I'm coming straight into them. If they're a person who fixes or fires, I've initiated their response and I step outside it and I have my shot and they're still fighting over here. Okay, so that's its use. But when you use your feet, remember with this one, it's actually changing range. In, out, in, out. So, and remember that, that there's tension at that in and out point. So if I'm fighting Runkwalder, here I am. So as, as I'm, I'm comfortable because Ron Valder's distance is, is pretty far, I can kind of pick up, I can be a little comfortable here. I don't have any tension in my sis. I'm very comfortable here. He just stepped way out away from me. Right. So you get, you barely see him on screen. There we go. There we go. <laughs> so here we are. And now Ron Valder takes that step forward. I'm like, here I am. I'm covering up because he stepped in. He's going to throw. Well, he didn't. Here I am. I'm looking. Whoop. And then he moves. So it, that's how he's talking about it can be used in that effective way. Perfect. Okay. It's remember, it doesn't mean that your opponent's going to throw. It just means you're putting your opponent into thought. That thought may be wrong. Well, could step and I could actually do this. Now wrong. Well, knows I'm backing out. So watch, he could still do the crossover, but he's going to cut a different angle. It's not going to be a circle. It's going to be an oval. Here he goes. He steps. I'm here, and now he still does it, but it's a longer oval. And he's right back to that same distance he's supposed to be away from me. But he learned something in that. If I squat, he steps, squat, he learns that I'm really in a bad place because I, it's very hard for me to move when I'm in tension or squatting. Right. So this is why we use this. These are why we use these things. This is the same thing. Sometimes I won't take, I'll make it look like I'm taking a step. Here I am, I'm fighting wrong brother. Oh, he's gonna back up as soon as I give a little step. Oh, look, he's taking a little smaller step. Now, now I change very fast. I went from, hey, I'm just gonna take these little steps, make you think, make you think. Oh, no, I'm gonna move and throw some. So we're using all that. We're using a little jab step in. That's how we're combining the exercises that we're doing on the ladder. And because you're all very comfortable with those, that's how we build stuff in a fight. You notice we're building this exercise. I'm, I'm like, for a second, I, if he falls back as soon as I take a step, I'm like, all right, it's going to be very difficult to get around him. But instead, or yeah, if I'm here and he takes a step forward. I'm like, whoa, I'm going to take it. Now I'm using, guess what I just used? I took a little funk, then I took that big step backwards, <laughs> right? That, that exercise we use, that reverse jab step, right? So, so the idea is that's we're learning that from our opponent, taking what we learn, and then instantly responding. So that's how we're testing. We're testing, we're probing with our feet and our movement. I switch feet, I switch feet. If he doesn't move while I'm switching feet, or if I move over here and he just switches his body, 
No, he moved his feet. He's still in good <laughs> in good neutral form. If I if I'm here and I go here and he twists, I'm like, oh, he's in a terrible state. Look, I got the inside that leg. He dipped down into it. So a lot more to lean. I can throw the offside. Oh, look, he made a block over here. So now I'm going to do this again. I'm here. Now he makes that block. Bang! I go back to the other side for the hook to the back of the head. We're using all of these feet to probe and make your opponent know. If I just go into a fight like this, I, I, now he's leading. I, I think I'm walking right at him. I'm leading. I'm the big guy. I'm walking on. You know, no, you're not. And see, he takes that right away from me. I don't even know where he's going. Now I have to respond. I'm like, hey, hey, can you stay here? I don't know. He's controlling it now. So that's why. I tell you, one of the easiest steps to make while you start a fight, you're like, oh, okay. I just learned that he kept his frame perfect, his hips right at me. I watched for sword and shield if there was a gap in the movement. Did he stay in a good neutral form? But I didn't, I didn't threaten you back. Right. So, but the, the key here is I learned that, okay, this guy has a good neutral form. I'm going to have to walk. I could go to the other side, see what he does there. And then, ah, see, this time he didn't move his feet. He squatted, so now I'm going to come over here. This is how we're using feet to create a fight. Instead of necessarily, and we can use a sword to create a fight as well. And later, we're talking about taking both those things. I mean, there might be time. Watch, here's the simplest way. Well, I just leaned. I did that toe lean, and I gave him, gave him some edge out here. And he moved back. He moved his feet. I did Okay, so so that's how we're learning. So those are the things that we're talking about and the reasons why we're doing these exercises. Another thing Ron Guller would do to close range without me knowing is here, we're at pretty far range. But he'll pass instead of straight into me. He'll pass as he's doing stuff, he'll pass into range. He just, so now he's closer than what I thought he was gonna be. Right? Even if I turn, he's the one that's controlling range. So now he, so he starts way outside, and then he, he makes a movement, and now he's in he's in a throwing range. He can throw either side. Out here, he couldn't throw much of anything. He takes one step on an angle. I think he's just moving around me, but he's totally actually maneuvering into a range that he's taking advantage. So he's using movement to manipulate range now. Super important, because that range could be a range of inches. And that range will also dictate the type of throw you're gonna do. Does that make sense? All right, so let's go ahead. Oh, I have a question for Ron Balder. Because Ron Balder, this seems an awful lot like we're doing the ladder is lava around the pole. Sometimes. You know, like you take, you're in stance, you take a step, a slight step, that would be the foot next to the ladder. And then you swing it across, you take a step. Am I am I wrong about this? Which no, one is the ladder is lava? Of it. So uh. the, the generality is, I, I'm looking at his range. And for those who haven't heard me say this before, the person's range basically comes yeah. off their feet. There we go. Okay. So both of us have lines off our feet. Whatever weapon we're using has a range. So it creates a pie shape. That's the real danger. So we're talking about range. We're not literally talking 360. So here, though you can't see it, I'm about I'm less than three feet from him. Oh, okay. Close, but I can be safe if his pie is over here. Right, because now my shoulder is in back of me. Right. His so, range, his range is always his range as long as he keeps his hips so on. So what I'm looking to do is with using the lava one, like you talked about, I'm stepping just into the outside of his pie. So he's, I've told him I come right into his danger area. Typically, he is prepared to kill me now because I've gone into this hip, my, his strength. The moment I feel him prepared, most people will lock. I step outside his pie. Now I'm here. Now suddenly his mind has to go from, I have a shot to, I have nothing and my defense is weak, just like that. Okay. But I can do it with other steps. I can do it with the shuffle. Right. Or I can just push myself over. Well, I'm I, can do, yeah, there, I can do no feet like he was before. So I can lean to this side and then shoot over. It's smaller, but it's the same thing. Okay. I'm 
giving an impression of one direction and changing it. Okay, uh, maybe I'll talk to you about this later, but what I'm thinking, but I, I acknowledge what you're saying. Thank you. Okay. And you and I will talk more later. <laughs> So yeah, I think that are you are you talking about the the ladder is lava and that let's say which one is the ladder is lava? Yes. It's, 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 it's put forward over the ladder. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I would put my foot on the line. Exactly. No. This, this, this one. I got it up. Yes. Hold on. Let me just make sure. Go ahead, and then we'll pull your yours up to make sure. Yes. That's what Ron Weller was just doing. Yes. Okay. So it seems like we're doing an awful lot of this with, with that step that you're talking about. Well, remember that in the, the rotational, you're actually holding a distance. You are doing, you know, there, right. There's a basic, same basic dropping foot pattern, but now you're turning. The only difference here is you're turning your feet to make sure that your hips are always going in a circle. Instead of down straight down a ladder. Right. Okay. It's just that this is not something brand new to us. It's something we've done. You're exactly right. You're 100% exactly right. almost right. all of this stuff. That's exactly the point. What we're doing here is nothing new. This is, in fact, that's, you hit on the exact head of the nail. We don't do these up and down because this is how we fight. We don't fight in the line. We never fight in the line. That's a rule I break sometimes too. Um, but what this allows us to do is take away all the parameters around the movement, do it in one direction, the same way, over and over and over, forwards and backwards, both feet, so our bodies get it. And so, you don't have to think about right, it. Right, so when I face Ranas, I don't have to think, I'm going to do the lava step, I'm going to step into his range, I'm going to cross over and into this stand. I can't be thinking about my feet. I have to be thinking about, he's, he looks a little flat-footed, so I'm going to give him, I'm like, so he there starts to look a little flat footed. So I'm going to give him the pressure like I gave him earlier and see, because earlier in the fight somewhere, I did something like this and he just did the, right. this, right? right? So now that I know that, now I know I'm going to put that pressure on and then I'm going to attack it from over here. <laughs> I, my mind is on, as soon as I make this motion, I'm expecting him to go down. If he goes down, I continue. Right, but you notice the key here is the plan developing here. The execution is without thought. This is the idea of clear or no mind, right? If we're not getting too because if, if if you have to, and we talked about this before as we were going through exercises, and that is, I want everybody to go through the ladder, just doing the feet. Don't overthink it. Just be in a zone, right? This is what's happening here. Wrong ballers. This is the part that, that we keep talking about. There's there's the battle of thought, right? And then there's execution. Battle of thought is, I saw these things. I'm thinking, I'm going through this OODA loop, planning an attack, right? And then, and then you execute the attack without thought. Right. And that's trying to get you because if you can't, if you have to think about, I have to move this first, this foot first, I'm going to attack him. So, okay, I got to give him a jab step and then I got to move this foot and then I got to throw. I'm thinking through every piece of it and I'm in trouble because it's too slow. But if I give him a jab foot, it's all one because your body has trained it so much that you don't have to think about it anymore. So we had a coach's corner Friday. We talked about defense and we decided to define defense as being in control of the fight. And it, while it makes sense, uh, that's helped me clarify some of my thoughts. And that is that, that level of control and what we're doing here. Well, you may understand it. You won't get it until you get there, until you have control. And the only way you're going to get there is to have all the pieces it takes to make control. So a lot like winning a fight, you can't win a fight. Nobody can win a fight. You can do everything right and it will be a win. You learn all these things, you learn all the techniques and you apply them all, you will get control. That's how it works. The stuff we're talking about, we're not expecting you to go, oh, okay, so I'm just gonna use the footwork to do the thing. It's not how it works. It's not how it works at all. What you're gonna do is you're gonna do the ladder until you understand your feet and align. Then we're gonna go around a post until we get our feet. 
right? Then we're going to go through a figure eight because a figure eight is now three dimensional movement in all directions using different steps to make different movements. And then we're going to bend it like Ron is this. So now the, the figure eight's this way. So I'm going to come in on it hard and then cut back, fade a little off his center line, cut the weak spot, cut to his other weak spot. Right, so now I get it in a figure eight. <laughs> then <laughs> we're going to start to actually use it in a fight. And the figure eight, it's no longer a figure eight. It's more like a roller coaster. It's rolling around. So now I'll put pressure on him. He'll put pressure back. I'll fade. I'll put it on the other side. Come back. And now I can start to change some of the circles. You notice he gave me a hard stick. So if you if if, if you get a chance, he gave me a hard stick. I start rolling here. Give me a hard stick here. I wasn't prepared to do anything, so the first thing I did is I backed out, and then I started rolling into the other quarter. But if you look at all the pieces, all the pieces are there. If you watch that over and over, what you'll see is you'll see a little lunge step. With a turning foot. You see a little lunge step. You see a gather step, and then a crossover to cut me back the other direction. But then sometimes the crossover, I'll actually step back more, so I can not only go over and go back, there's a million examples, but they all start here. So when we talk about this other stuff, just put it in your head and go, okay, I have a goal. That's where I'm headed. That's why I'm doing all this. And then later, I mean, and then later what happens is you end up in a place where you don't have to think about footwork. It's happening. In fact, the good part is you're not just standing here and like, oh, I'm going to attack forward because that's all you learn. I like it. I'm going to attack. Here's a, this, and this isn't long ago for me. I'm going to attack into his corner and try to get around something. So I look like, and then I pass by, but I'm sideways to him, and I do a passing attack because because that's what we did. But now I'm going to do this passing attack. It literally looks a lot more like this. If I'm going to start attacking to his side, I start turning my feet and I start getting rotational in on. Right? Because I've learned how to do that with my feet. Now, all of a sudden, people are like, man, your movement. I don't, I don't understand. Right? You start having these little jab feet. They were like, you know, I use these jab feet all the time just to keep my opponent in energy and see what they're going to do here. Right? I'm hardly doing it. I'm like, oh, 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 look at me. I'm relaxed. My opponent doesn't know that. They're like, he's going to attack. Oh, no. He's going to attack. Oh, no. He's gonna attack. Oh, and now he's not breathing, and that's where yeah. that's where that's where they start losing their condition. So I feel like we're starting to go off on another channel. Yeah. I just want people to understand that we keep repetitious stuff, and then doing weird things like tones and figure eights. They all build. There's a reason for them. They all end in the thing that we're trying to get to, and that's what best helped me understand was that sense of control. We can we can define it for you. But you're not going to get it until you get it, until you actually have it. And this is how you get there. You stack all these tools up and you get them. Yeah, you can you can have the you can read every book you want to read, know it all, and never actually be able to do any of it. You have to learn the tools to take that education you're getting to apply stuff. And then that's where that's where the fight comes into place, that that train that's sparring piece. Sparring gives you that next layer, and then the fight, that crown fight. And when I say crown, just the crown round fight gives you the next layer of understanding mentally how to how to take the fight. So here's our training, our drills, sparring, crowns. That's what we should be thinking about in the three layers. Right now we're giving a lot of drills because we don't have the option to do a lot of sparring. Right. But this kind of thing, in the figure eight, when we start doing this teams, is starting to bleed into exactly into that becoming a, a spar. All right, so I think uh, uh, we pushed up uh, again around uh, around three o'clock. I want to say thanks to everybody. Um, so uh, I thought it was a great. We had a great crew here today. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Them, yes, uh, Angus, you guys really enjoyed it. Abelard, it's awesome to have you back. Uh, Nessa, Wolverine, it was great to have you on. I wish you were here. I know they were supposed to be here, but we got snow, so it didn't didn't help. Uh, yeah, the snow. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, this this yeah, snow is know. really bad here. We were going like thirty miles an hour on the highway. It was fantastic. Well, that's what Sivrid said too. He's like, "I am not coming. The road was terrible." Yeah. It makes Alexander, me sad. Uh, we're gonna get it. 
And he is way closer than I am. Yeah. If you don't want your snow, send it to us. We're getting tired. <laughs> Wolfie is from Scotland, which has snow. I'm from the north of England. Climate changes meaning we're just not getting snow it in is. our winters, and that's not a British winter. And we, we, do, we want our snow. Yeah. So yeah, just, yeah. Just yeah. package it. Um, what did you say in America for when you pay postage at the other end? Collect. That's it. Eventually, <laughs> collect it. Or, or yeah. in Canada, for when, what you say when you pay. Send it, collect. Yeah, we'll like when that. we got married in 2001, <laughs> it was at the end of February, and it was minus 26 <laughs> on our wedding in night. Britain. <laughs> yeah, you got thirty think, centimeters in twelve hours. You guys don't. Yeah, want I was gonna say, can it? The best got hammered. So yeah, it's it's yeah. great. To, it's great to have come by. We really enjoyed this one. Yeah, we only got the four coaches, but it was just a mess. Okay, we're gonna we're go ahead. Gotcha. Right, thank you for uh, the education again, and everyone that we're in. Let's go fight for those of us who can.